Hi, how are you doing? My name is Mario and this channel is about lifestyle. It has some stuff from gaming, it has some stuff from financial advices, but now I decided that this video is gonna be coronavirus. Stay tuned to know more on what is the coronavirus, how can you protect yourself and your business from it. Here's how. Coronavirus. Before I start off, I just wanted to make everything clear that the stuff that I'm gonna be saying in this video are facts that have been already proven by either BBC, Guardian, scientists and just people around the world who know more about it than probably I do or necessarily you do. But that's the whole point of the video so that everything is based on facts where you can know and understand fully what is the virus, how can you protect yourself from it and your business alongside that. The coronavirus is actually a family of viruses that can cause as mild things as just a common cold all the way up to SARS and MERS. And what those viruses actually look like is like a tennis ball. It also has those spikes coming out of it. Depending on the type of spike, it actually allows it to attach itself to other places. For example, some viruses have this spikes that attaches to your nose. And what that actually means is that you just get a common cold. But the SARS spikes and the SARS virus itself has those spikes that allows it to attach to your lungs and that can cause some more serious problems along the way. And unfortunately, it actually replicates itself pretty easily. As soon as it attaches itself and those spikes, it has the options to replicate itself on a very consistent basis. Unfortunately, it uses our equipment to make its own viruses. Most of the common coronaviruses actually live in animals, but in this particular case, they started off in Wuhan, which is one of the major cities in China. It's located right next to Shanghai, if you wanna know more about it. The whole idea of how it actually came inside a human is that one of the animals, one of the fish that, that was actually selling one of those markets in Wuhan actually was eaten and consumed by a human, and that's how it actually came inside of it. Which of course was something that scientists were not expecting, because you would think that such kind of diseases wouldn't go in such way to another real life human being. The weirdest thing, however, that scientists found out after realizing that there's a few people in China and in Wuhan more specifically that are actually sick was that this can get transmitted very easily into those healthcare people that actually took care of those ill people. And just like all viruses, it needs to reach a target and that unfortunately is people's lungs. And it gets there, of course, with your help. It doesn't have wings, it doesn't just spread itself. It's all up to what are you gonna do about it and how you've taken care of yourself. And that's why scientists say, don't hang around around sick people because those people are actually gonna get all of those illnesses inside you. For example, you, you don't wanna get to be near around somebody coughing because you're actually gonna breathe that cough in and somebody that is sneezing. Just be aware of that when you're gonna be around big crowds or you're gonna go to see a movie. Just try to limit yourself as much as you can going around cities. The masks that people are currently using are not as helpful as they are and that's proven by scientists because they're a bit leaky and the virus actually can come around and just sneak inside your mouth and nose. However, it's very important that all the people that have the current coronavirus are wearing those masks because they actually somehow help those people not to spread it. If you can think about it, they won't be able to touch their faces or their, their, just their mouth, their nose, and they won't be able to spread it all around with their hands. They would be able to just speak normally. It may actually leak a little from the side, as I mentioned previously, but it won't be as much as if they're just speaking around normally and you're wearing that mask, because actually it can breathe in. Because if they're spreading all around with their hands and everything, it's gonna cause to, you know, those emergency situations where you can see all around the world happening now. Here you can see, this is the mask that I'm speaking about. So as you can see, it won't be, it's not open from any side, it's going all around and it allows me to breathe in fully filtrated, as you can see here, air, which will obviously protect me more than the mask where it will be as open as it is from here and people can actually, you know, the air will be able to go inside and I'll probably get sick. I'm gonna make sure to provide you with a link on how to get those masks from Amazon. They cost around nine pounds, so it's like, 10 euros or whatever your currency is 
and I think they're pretty useful as, as I'm gonna be traveling in a few weeks and I think this is gonna be very helpful when I'm gonna be traveling on the airports. And now it's time to discuss what are the symptoms. At the beginning it's gonna be something like a, like a small cold, you're gonna feel uh, a bit you know, out of shape and you might not feel as energetic as usual, you might wanna just lay down in bed and don't really do as much. But unfortunately, as soon as that virus starts manufacturing in your lungs, you are not able to breathe as usual. So that actually causes you to have those lung problems and breathing problems. And as previously mentioned, they spread around very quickly and it depends all on the spice that they currently have. So having that in mind, you can actually kill the lung cells. Most people, unfortunately, when they get to lose a lot of lung cells is when they end up in the hospitals because they can't really breathe without having any machine attached to them or any kind of oxygen mask uh, which is on their face. How is it treated? Well, that's a good question. Unfortunately, at the moment, scientists haven't found a way to treat it and it's mutating, so that's why I think it's one of the most dangerous diseases out there. However, there's not so many people that have spread it so far and China has taken very good measures and as you can see actually they're decreasing the time and the, during the days the people are getting affected by it. Whereas for example in people in places such as the US or Europe, people are not yet taking some extensive measures and it increases day by day if not even like by 20% and more. One of the hardest things after, you know, getting the virus is actually understanding how you're gonna tackle those problems. And scientists have recommended to go immediately into hospitals and to speak with a doctor, which will be able to assist you. If you're having some hard time breathing, they're gonna give you some masks and some oxygen. If you're having some hard time drinking, because some people actually don't, are not, you know, fully available to drink and, to, and have fluids in their body, they're gonna give it to you by systems. So what's the, what's the most important thing is to always take care of yourself and not only on a physical level, just be hygienic and your mind needs to be on the same level as your body. So if your mind is strong, your body will be strong as well. And unfortunately that virus is totally new. That's why the bodies are having such a hard time actually figuring out how to best, best tackle with those things. Whereas if you, know, if you had a fever beforehand, you may be able to go pretty quickly out of it. Or if you had a cold, you, your body is already used to it and it knows how to tackle it properly. And just to give you a bit more insight of how scientists will explain it. So every time you get sick, you have a cold or whatever it may be, you have those antibodies who are going around your whole immune system, your whole body. And that actually attacks the virus itself. It's, it stops it from spreading around your whole body so that you don't get to some kind of malfunction and you don't have troubles as either sleeping, breathing, or one of those important functions as walking around, smelling, one of the, the senses doesn't stop working. Fortunately, there aren't any small antibodies who can yet fight with this coronavirus. And that's what's causing the whole drama here and the whole issue. Also another unfortunate thing is having in mind that people that have already had any kind of diseases or currently have, or they have any health issues, they'll get affected heavier. And that of course can lead to more deaths and that means that children, very young children, will either be very quickly healed because of their good strong immune system or the total opposite because they're small babies and they, they haven't yet had this kind of system where they have antibodies working throughout the whole 24-7 period, even while you're sleeping, trying to get rid of that bad virus. Of course, elderly will also have a hard time getting rid of those viruses because their immune system is much slower, much weaker. So that's why you can see that most of the deaths, unfortunately, have been for people that are 55 or 60 years old and above. So that's why I really recommend if you're that age, make sure that you're not doing anything with, unless it's either business critical if it's for your business or, or you're sucking up with groceries and the person is gonna come bring you the stuff. You, you should try to limit yourself if you're 50 and above because for you the risk is much higher. For a normal person it's something around 0 .0 0.05 to 0.20% to get to actually die from it if you're until 38, 30 years of age. But after 30 it increases up to until 14. And, and here comes the most important question. How can you avoid catching this virus? How can you protect yourself and your loved ones? Just wanna remind everybody that the virus won't be able to hurt you if it touches your skin. Anywhere around your skin, it wouldn't be an issue. But the moment if it, it has touched already your hand and you haven't washed your hands and you touch your hand, 
with your mouth, it actually goes right where it wants to go. It's going inside and it's gonna go around your cells and it's gonna create those spikes and it's gonna actually multiply itself and at the end you'll have lung problems and you have to go to hospitals and you get the whole gesture. So the whole idea is that if, if you get to touch something that has been touched before and it has the virus, that would not be an issue. Just make sure that you clean your hands constantly. Happy uh, birthday, You're taking the precautions and the measurements that are needed for you to not somehow get it inside your mouth or nose. If you find out that there's a person that you have been in contact with and actually has the, the virus itself. So the first thing that you should do is clean your hands, clean your whole body if you can, as, as hard as you can, and make sure to call a healthcare officer to explain the whole situation. Whether you've met them for a flight and whether you're feeling any kind of symptoms, just make sure you're calling somebody that can assist you, either a doctor or a GP, maybe some, some kind of healthcare, healthcare worker that can assist you and give you ideas on how you should proceed. Because I'm sure you each person contacts about from 20 up to 100 people on a monthly basis, if not even a thousand people, because if you're a celebrity, etc. So you just want to make sure that you limit yourself as much as you can from all of those handshakes or, you know, bumps and as, as basketball players, you know, how you do that? You know, from all of those, you just want to make sure that you stay home, you relax, and as soon as you've already made aware the healthcare system that you may have it and you already have some symptoms, they're gonna just tell you what are the next steps to proceed further. But what happens if you don't have the symptoms, but you know for sure that you have had interaction with somebody that has the virus? What you should do is something called self-quarantine. Of course, you should let your doctor know of what has happened, but make sure that you, for the next two weeks or so, you just try and stay home as much as you can, uh, if you can speak with your manager or if you're working or whoever it may be in your company, maybe HR, maybe the appropriate way for you and just let them know that you will self-quarantine because you want to make sure that you don't spread the virus around if you have it. And the whole point is that after, if after those two weeks you're feeling perfectly healthy, you don't have any kind of breathing problems or you just don't feel any kind, in any way ill, you can just go back to work as usual and everything will be perfect. And of course people may ask why two weeks, that seems like a very long time. Well, let me tell you, because usually if you've been in contact with a person who has it, the symptoms won't show up for at least five to seven days. So if you're in self-quarantine for five to seven days, you actually will be able to see the, the symptoms around that time during the second week. And what that means is that actually the virus can spread very easily, even if you don't have the symptoms yet. That's why it's actually getting in such a crisis mode now on a whole around the world. Because people don't know that they have it and at a certain point they, they just start experiencing those symptoms when it's already been a week since they've been in contact with someone and they've spread it to already hundreds of people. How worried should you be? Uh, considerably worried, but just make sure that you're not taking some extreme measurements. For example, I'm gonna be working from home for the next few, few weeks and that's because the company that I work in, which is Silicon Valley Bank, on a global scale has decided now to work from home. Of course, we're continuing to do business, we're having uh, phone calls, Zoom calls, and everything with our clients, partners, and just colleagues, but we're minimizing that face-to-face -face contact because we know that this will definitely decrease the chances that we're spreading around the virus if somebody may have it. Because of course, people like traveling and you never know, it may have started in China, but it may be actually now in Australia, you know, they don't really, they're not so close uh, geographically because you need to take a flight, etc. But maybe some of the people that had it in China have already taken flights and have been all around the world and spread it. You never know. And of course, you should always try to be as much as you can oriented towards your hygiene. You want to make sure that your hygiene is on level where you don't have to think about whether you've you've washed your hands already for like five hours. Just make sure to wash your hands as much as you can. And something that the uh, I've been personally told is to start singing happy birthday. Happy birthday, Jim. And that's approximately like 20 seconds. So every time you wash your hands, just make sure you're happy birthday to you. And you just do it for about 20 seconds. Also, it might be good to have some hand sanitizer, sanitizers all around with you. Like have this, this small one where you can just spread it around your hands if needed. And maybe from time to time, you know, just do it a bit more often. Of course, you just don't want to get used to it, so just do, make sure you do it at your own precaution and at your own consistency. And of course, if you've taken all those precautions for yourself and you're not gonna spread it all around, your family, friends, partners, clients, whatever it may be, it's gonna die. Because the virus itself needs to replicate and if it doesn't, it will stop. 
new diseases that we've had in the past, like Ebola, etc., they've all had a death rate of about 10%, and this one is about 2%. It is, of course, very dangerous, but you should always fully take care of yourself first, make sure to isolate if need, make sure to, to get some health care, and you will be fine at the end of the day, as long as you fully take care of yourself, your friends and family. And of course, a bit from the investment point of view, if you're thinking of investment, investing into stocks, certain stocks, you just wanna make sure that you're investing into the right one. At the moment, everything which is a bit more digital and actually saves more time and it allows you to work from home and all of those kind of things like, for example, Microsoft Teams, it may be maybe even Netflix because people tend to relax a bit more at home and, and maybe even Zoom. That is something that maybe you should consider investing in. You've also probably seen that since 1987, this is like the, one of the worst weeks, if not even months that has happened on the, the stock market. S&P is down like 20 plus percent. All of the big uh, Dow Jones and all of the big indices, you know, are falling down. And, and even Tesla, that was up 900, now it's about 600. All of those big stocks are actually getting influenced because of that. People that provide products are also obviously gonna have a big, bigger losses because most of the manufacturing comes either from China or just the suppliers are in China. Also, Amazon will probably have a bit issues around a bit of issues around the deliveries. I've personally experienced issues with Amazon deliveries and alongside with Waitrose deliveries because previously I could order something and it will come on the next day as, as you know from Amazon Prime and just from Waitrose it would be just a few days if you have uh, ordered groceries. But let me tell you, now Amazon delivers from three to four days. It doesn't deliver on the next day for me. I don't know why. And also the Waitrose, every time I order groceries, it's a week ahead. So because of all of those issues with deliveries and suppliers, there's massive delays. So you should expect big losses from those companies. Companies have already said that they're gonna not reach their target profit for the years. There might be like 50% cut or whatever. You just wanna make sure that if you're investing, you're investing into the right stuff. Of course, another thing that led into all of those massive movements and as you call them like shorts and, and of course bear markets is because people fear. When people fear, they tend to either take some cash out or they do some radical decisions. I've seen people already selling their homes, trying to make some quick bucks so that they can actually survive for the next 10 to 15 years and don't even think about those kind of things. I've seen people shopping all around the, for the groceries and there's no toilet paper left and people start actually arguing about those kind of things which is a bit nuts, having in mind that there's so much toilet paper around the world. Ah! From an investment standpoint, you should also think if you're a short-term, mid-term or long-term investor. If you are a long-term investor, now may be actually the best price for you to buy into the S&P 500 market. Because if you wanna actually think about it and see, the graphs when it goes for the past 10 years, it has all, all mainly been positive and it gives an average return of 8% per year, which is actually very high. So if you were to invest now, you're actually gonna get a very cheaper price for an S&P 500 before it has both overperformed and underperformed for ended up like minus 3% or minus 23% and plus 30%. And after a few years of being at a minus, which is like five to 20 percent it always has at least three to four years consecutive ones where it's on a big plus and i can show you the stats now what i also mean by that is that you should think if you're a short-term investor maybe you want to sell a bit more because there are going to be more cases coming up and i'm telling you it will not ease off now there's going to be at least a few months until everything settles in and countries start opening up their airports and when you think about it, investments what is happening with the airline industry? The stock prices are going down so much. And why the thing is that people will not be able to travel, etc., etc. So you can make your own conclusions and see where is best. For example, me personally, I've shorted some of the airlines when I first found out that there's gonna be some issues with the whole traveling. It's all about how you can perceive things and how quickly you can react. Of course, I've already closed my short positions and I'm more than happy with that because I've achieved a certain type of profit which will finance my other activities. Having in mind that I'm gonna be going to South Africa in the next few weeks, I won't be surprised if United Kingdom and uh, our best friend Boris Johnson decides to close down the airports. 
so that we, we won't be able to travel around the world and no flights will be coming in. And unfortunately I had to delay this trip. Qatar Airways, as I previously mentioned in my videos, have been super supportive for this and have provided both me and my family with 100% guarantee that we can book this trip again in up to 12 months time. We're probably gonna try and do something around October, November or January, February. This seems like the best time for us as I'm gonna be going back to university next year after I finish my placement at SVB and my family will also have enough time to actually plan ahead, do all the work that they need to because they're currently being on leading positions that they want to make sure that they can take the time off. And that will be all for today. So just let me know if you have any questions about the virus or what is the next video that you want me to do. I'm trying to stay up to date and to do the videos that you guys want to see. So just let me know and I'm going to make sure to be as relevant as possible and as detailed as possible. Thank you all so much for watching and see you on the next one. See ya!